Holmes Worm Hat. This is a video about how the seasons actually work. It's recently been winter time, and you'll notice that the seasons change, and you can feel when they change. It's not like this very gradual change from summer into fall into winter where you're not quite sure where summer and fall lie and you're not quite sure when fall turns into winter it's like one day you wake up and you're like dang it's winter outside and it's because the nasa outer space fantasy land it's that's not how real life works it's just how they tell you it works and here let's just talk about the way that things actually work and a lot of stuff that's hidden that they don't talk about so the sun it's the greater light it rules the day it's hot they don't hide the fact that the sun is hot. It's just self-evident. The moon is the lesser light. It rules the night. It's cold. The cooling effect of the moon isn't nearly as noticeable as the heating effect of the sun, but it's still there. The moon really does have a cooling effect, and there's different ways that you can, can go about figuring that out. Just what made it click for me was that when I was parking my car outside during the winter, it was only getting frosted on one half of my car. And half of my car was in moon shade, and it didn't get frosted. And then the half of my car that wasn't in moon shade, so it was getting moonlight, it was totally frosted over. And it's not like the trees were providing any insulation, the trees didn't have any leaves on them, so... It was the moonlight that was making half of my car freeze. And the reason I'm talking about this is because, I mean, that's it. The sun is hot, and the moon is cold. When you have more sun, it's going to be hotter. And when you have less sun and you have more moon, things are going to be colder. Now just some observations. The sun and the moon are the same size. They're inside of the firmament. What we see is optical. It's an image. It's a projection, similar to how rainbows are optical. And... I don't know that it's obvious, but to me, it's one of those things that makes sense when it's been brought up. It's one of those things that gets mocked all the time, but there's some truth to the jokes, and yeah, I'll get to, the, to that in a second. But the moon, it does look like a projected image, like a an optical illusion, like a hologram. It looks like that. Well, it's because that's what it is, similar to a rainbow. A rainbow, we see it, but it's not an actual physical object that you could go touch. And in a, in a similar way, the moon that you see in the sky, you can't go touch it. It's going to keep moving as you would approach it. And who knows what the actual moon object is? Something up in the firmament, and it's electric. Those are my guesses. Genesis 1, just some interesting things. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. On the fourth day, there were already three days of creation. We don't know if these are 24-hour days or what. Time may have been going way slow, way more slowly back then. And just the point of this is that the sun and the moon are actually pretty late in the creation. There already was day and night. There already were plants. So land was already here and plants were already around before the sun was even there. And it's because daytime, light and sun, not the same thing. Sun is like a spotlight, like a heat lamp. Wheel in the sky keeps on turning. And here's the mocking that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, and the earth is flat and the moon is a hologram. The moon is a hologram. In a way, the thing that you see up in the sky, you're not actually seeing a place you can go. You're seeing a projected image of something that's inside of the firmament. The sun and moon, they're disks, they're not spheres. They both rotate and turn like a wheel, not like a spinning space ball. If you go look up NASA GIFs of sunspots, they make it... They fake the rotation to make it look like it's a ball spinning in three dimensions, when in fact they're wheels that spin like a gear facing you. You know, if you're like facing a bicycle wheel, somebody's riding past you, the way a, the way a wheel spins, that's what the sun and the moon do. They don't rotate like a space ball. T 
title locking and the one in a million random chance explanations for the sun and moon are weak arguments. Why is the moon the exact size, the exact size as the sun? Why do we only see if the moon was a sphere? Why do, doesn't it rotate around? If NASA Spaceballs Outer Space Fantasyland is real, oh, they they can just come up with whatever answer they want. Title locking. Okay, it's a bunch of BS. The who know? I mean, the moon is a disk. Maybe there is another side. Some people have suggested that the moon is like the back side of the sun. That could be it. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it works. Part of waking up is admitting that you don't know the answer to everything, and neither do they. They don't know the answers to everything. And you need to be open to different possibilities. Saying that I don't know is always a better answer than just spouting out some BS. That's obviously not true. What do you know? If you look at things through microscopes, they look exactly like planets. People say, look, look at the, the things in the heavens are clearly spheres. Well, does that mean that skeletal muscle under a microscope is clearly a sphere? Does okay, paint swatches are a sphere? It's optics. You're looking at optics. Just because it may give some sort of appearance of being round-ish, doesn't mean anything. It's just an optical property. That's why the moon looks kind of round-ish, even though you can tell it's not a sphere. You're just seeing a kind of curved image because the dome is curved. The dome above us is curved. And it's just the same thing with this photo I took of a lake. Does that mean that the lake is a sphere? Because it kind of looks like that. Reminds me of Neptune, right? The images that they give us of Neptune and all that stuff optics the seasons are caused by the balance of sun and moon not by the tilt of earth's axis outer space is not real outer space fantasy land is just not real and it's not complicated they overcomplicate everything because they'll say stuff like oh it's the tilt of the axis it's during the summer the northern hemisphere is actually closer to the sun they'll tell you stuff like this just they make everything way overcomplicated, nonsense, fantasy land. That's why they have to draw cartoons for everything. When truth is just much more simple, easy. Summer. The sun dominates during the summer. The sun rises far in the east. It sets far in the west. The sun is high in the sky. The moon is low in the sky and it's often absent, meaning just it doesn't spend that much time in the sky when it is in the sky during summer. Winter. The moon dominates. In the winter, the moon rises far in the east, and it sets far in the west, and it's high in the sky. And the sun is low in the sky and around for only a little in the winter. And remember, the sun is hot, the moon is cold, so there you go. That explains everything. It's that simple. Sun, hot, when it's around more often and when it's higher in the sky, meaning it's way up there in the firmament, more directly overhead, it's much hotter. When that heating lamp isn't near you, and instead you have this cooling lamp, the mysteries of the moon. I don't know how the moon works. Cool light. It's very strange. Okay, but during the winter, you have this cooling lamp that's very, very close over you, overhead. And then the heating lamp is farther away. That's it. Just the, it's different paths that these two objects take through the, the heavens, through the firmament. They're on tracks, and I don't know if they're physical tracks, like a train, like an actual track up there, or if this is just all electrical. We know that there's waters above. Maybe they're floating platforms. Maybe it's just a floating disc, floating platform. I don't know. But see how much better it is to say I don't know and be able to entertain these different ideas rather than just guzzling up whatever somebody shoves in your face, a cartoon image, artistic rendition. So the perspective is in the north. Don't say horrible things like northern hemisphere. You don't live on a sphere. There's the far north and there's the south. And this is something that most flat earthers get wrong. Antarctica being a, the ice wall, that's a red herring. That's fake. That's not true. Antarctica is probably not even cold. The north is immense land. Think of Russia. Think of Alaska. We have tons and tons of icy land in the north. That's because the north is the outer out wall and the south is the center. Anyways, 
the, my drawings right here, these domes, it's just think of the observer at being the center here. Everybody can see, you know, your eyes can only see a certain distance. So think of you having this viewing window around you and it would look like this. So looking south. And this is just how you should track the sun. Just every day, pay attention to where's the sun in the sky. If there's the moon, where's the moon in the sky? In the summer, what I have drawn in red, it's like the sun's path. It The sun will ra rise in the east, and it rises up high in the sky really quickly during the summer. That's like the biggest thing that I noticed. During the summer, the sun rises up in the sky really, really quickly. It'll be really far in the east, and it just rises up high. And it stays high in the sky all day. And then it starts to sink down when it gets over to the west. Well, since it's summertime, the moon is, is kind of like the opposite. If you have a bunch of trees in the south on your property, you may just never even see the moon during the summer. Because it'll just be too low in the sky and it, it doesn't rise far enough in the east. Maybe these pictures make sense to you. Winter, it's just the opposite. The sun is going to be low in the sky the whole time and it's going to set farther south and the moon is going to be doing the the really fast rising and rising really far east it's just dominating your sky what's dominating your sky the the moon or the sun and of course in the in-betweens it'll be more balanced knowing their mo they overemphasize the importance of the sun they're sun worshipers a lot of times apollo the Statue of Liberty has a sun crown on them. It's just one of the things that they do is they worship the sun. Think of all the hippies it's talking about praising the sun and that they worship the creation, not the creator. God created the sun. Why would you worship an object, something that God made? You worship God. That's it. Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So one of their MOs is overemphasizing the importance of the sun. But if you just look into things, farmers rely heavily on the moon for planting schedules. The moon gives us a great indication of the times and the seasons. When to plant the crops has to do with the moon. Go look up Farmer's Almanac stuff they've been doing. If this stuff was BS and it didn't work, they wouldn't be doing it still. And farmers really, truly rely heavily on the moon for when they plant things. It probably, I mean, this is just my guess. I've heard of stuff, plant it on the full moon and whatever. Maybe when the moon, because I don't even know how the phases of the moon affect the cooling effect. I, I don't know. I haven't got that figured out. Is a full moon more cold than a new moon? I don't know. I, I seriously don't know. And it's fine to say that you don't know if you don't know. And... So yeah, just the, the idea of a full moon. Why would it be better to plant on a full moon? I'm just hypothesizing here. I have no idea. But maybe full moons are really harsh cold. So planting on a full moon, it's you're, you're not as likely to like freeze the little sprouts or something because you have a full month before the next really cold night. I have no idea. I just threw that out there. But the important thing is... Farmers really rely heavily on the moon, and it's because the moon has a lot to do with the weather, and they just tell you that everything is sun-dependent, and that the moon has nothing to do with the weather. And instead, they give weird other things. Oh, the moon has to do with the tides. No, the tides are just a whole nother complicated thing. I've never heard anybody have a good explanation. The tides are very mysterious. But let's just keep this video talking about the seasons. Their other big M.O. They obscure the truth by overcomplicating it, using figures so large and nonsensical they can just claim you're too small, insignificant, or stupid to understand. Understand, stand under, it's a passive. When, when somebody says, do you understand, think of like a cop or an authority figure. Do you understand me? They're, it's actually, they're telling you to take a submissive role, stand under, and... Yeah, to understand something is not not a good word. English is full of these spellcraft things. And to understand something is that really knowledge, is that really truth. It, what it really means is that you're you're just doing what you're told or you're submitting to whatever is the deemed right thing by 
some authority figure. Oh, you don't understand because you don't have the answer out of the textbook. They, people just think that you're not allowed to have your own theories because what you, if what you're saying doesn't match somebody in a lab coat, oh, you just don't understand. How often have you had people say stuff like that to you? And it's like, they, they have no idea. I went through all the same indoctrination that you did. I went to school. I went to college. I heard all the same BS. I took the same physics classes. Revelation chapter 17, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written. So here's just something interesting that I just realized. Most people say Mystery Babylon. They don't really emphasize. There's a comma there. It's like Mystery is the very first name. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery. That's just the first name. Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The very first name of this is mystery. This has all been one big mystery to unravel. And God is opening our eyes and helping us unravel it. The Great Deception, it's a mystery. It, the, what, you got to figure out the clues. Orange, 33. You got to unravel the sweater. And I think that's why it's called mystery. It was something we had to figure out. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God's creation is mighty. Fantasy land, fantasizing about nonsense is weak. And God's creation is mighty, and they try to obscure it, try to hide it. God's craftsmanship, the way that he made every, they want to turn everything into a random chaos to obscure the fact that, you know, the way people say God's fingerprint really is everywhere. And it's all about perspective. You can just invent some sort of fantasy land where God isn't always present, but that doesn't change reality that he is. <clears throat> Here's just kind of a final few thoughts. Buildings and monuments can be built so that every year on the expected date, the sun passes through the exact same position. How could such a thing be possible year after year in a chaotic world of spinning balls all traveling at incredible speeds? Where's Earth's wobble? Why are things able to be astronomically you know, aligned? You shouldn't, I hate words like that. Why can buildings be aligned with the heavens and never change? And year after year, it shows up in the same exact spot. If everything's flying and spinning, and you can just know that that's not how it would be. NASA Outer Space Fantasy Land doesn't match reality, so it's inconsistent with reality. And you just have to totally suspend your disbelief if you're gonna, if you're gonna say, oh yeah, that the flying and spinning sounds legit, and how you're able to build a building and the sun is gonna come up in an exact same little drill hole every single year. Like, there won't be any variations, right? No, the earth is flat and unmoving. Conclusion. The seasons are caused by the variation in the sun and moon's paths throughout the year. Sun hot, moon cold. This cycle is discrete and not continuous. In steps, this, you know, first day, second day, third day. Count your days. There's no half days, no quarter days. There really is this big... Uh, to me, it feels really important that outer space fantasy land would be a continuous system where everything is just slight variations from, from day to day. There wouldn't be, you wouldn't just go from one day to the next and be like, oh man, it really feels like winter today. Everything would just slowly creep into the next and bleed into the next. And one year wouldn't be exactly like the last year. There would be slight variations in things in a continuous NASA outer space fantasy land. But instead, what we get is very rigid in steps, and it's a repeating cycle that always falls back on itself. Nasha means to deceive in Hebrew. And if you're some sort of shill, you'll say, well, good thing that it's just NASA then and no H. Uh, what do you think that a little, somebody who's learning Hebrew for the first time, what do you think happens in their mind when they learn what Nasha means? They learn it's all a bunch of BS. It's fake. And outer space is fake and gay, which is why they need so many cartoons and artistic renditions. You don't need to fake it if it's real life. That's it for this video. God bless everybody.